Okay, Stephen Key here, and today I'm bringing on a good friend of mine. I would consider Karen a good friend. Um, she's been through this whole process of uh, licensing ideas, coaching students. She's got a great story to tell, but, but before we dig into a product that you have licensed, Karen, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me here today. It's uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to get to, to sit here and chat with you. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, my background is in healthcare, so I've spent most of my adult life working in healthcare, uh, nursing specifically, clinical nursing, and then moving into administrative uh, leadership type work. And then several years ago, probably three or four years ago, I got into um, wanting to explore my creative side a little bit more, uh, found InventRight, joined up as a student, spent some time working on my own projects, had a blast. And I did this while I was working. Um, so finding time to, to kind of fit that into my full-time work. Okay. And but and then um, ended up with an amazing opportunity to get to coach for InventRight, which was a lot of fun, really getting to help other people enjoy pursuing their passions the way I got to enjoy pursuing mine. So uh, now well, back Karen, in the healthcare world again. And, but Karen, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You've skipped over. You were um, you served our country, correct? Uh, I was. I was in the. I did. I was in the Navy for okay. um, about four and a half years as a nurse. All right, wonderful. I I wanted to mention that. So thank you for serving. I think um, it's a really a big deal, especially to me. So thank you very much. Oh, very kind um, of you. So let's talk about your project. Um, sure. It's really interesting that. I think your perspective of being a student and then a coach and then really guiding um, guiding others, but really guiding your, your own project, okay? Because there's a lot of twists and turns to it, isn't there? So many that you don't even see coming. <laughs> and your idea is actually, um, I would consider a, a big idea. And the, the reason why I think some of the issues or some of the things that you've had to overcome with your idea and I want to talk about those because sure. I think uh, it's I wouldn't say unique but you have to overcome certain things when you have an idea that that's a big idea and that's going to be implemented and it's going to be probably a, hopefully everywhere um, first of all what industry um, did you invent in and get, so get my, licensed my product is in the hospitality is where I've licensed it in the hospitality industry now how did you do that I mean, you're not in the hospitality industry, but you were able to, to come up with a, you must have seen this problem, you must have had this problem, and, and you, you saw it and, and you thought maybe I could apply this to the hospitality? I mean, is that how you saw it? Sure, yeah. I mean, it's a problem I think that could also um, be solved in the consumer goods okay. industry, um, but I saw more of an opportunity in the hospitality industry from a volume perspective okay. um, and from a value perspective in uh, in saving time in, in the work involved. So that okay. was kind of the direction I decided to take it from a starting point. Hopefully, you know, maybe someday I'll bring it to the, the consumer world, too. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Well, was it hard to reach out to those companies in that world? Because I, I think it's kind of unique. I think the hospitality is, is large. I think it's huge. But um, is it easy to reach out to those guys? I mean, the, the process of actually reaching out is no different than any other or any other industry. I think it, it was kind of harder to find them and to wow. find the right people um, okay. just because, you know, in this industry, I'm not like reaching out to hotels themselves. Right. I'm trying to find the people who sell stuff to hotels. Right. So it was just a little a little harder, perhaps, to to make my list. Okay. But um, but the actual process of reaching out was really no different. So a company that's in the hospitality industry, are they, are they just in the U.S.? Are they worldwide? Um, what's the profile on some of those companies, or at least the company you're working with? I think it probably varies, like a lot of other, a lot of other companies. But, uh, but this company does work in, in Europe as well as the United States. All right, so that's long arms. All right, so um, the traditional tools... I mean, did you use a video sell sheet? Was it the same traditional tools in every industry that uh, you've coached and helped others? I think so. Yeah, I mean, I followed the InventRight process and okay. did did the things that's recommended as part of the program and, and just really followed that through. And 
Uh, I'm fortunate that I have a product that demonstrates fairly well. So I think video is definitely a way to go. Um, I like a sell sheet was also very helpful, but okay. um, the video demonstration I think was probably most helpful in, in understanding the value of the product. Wonderful. So, um, so you reach out to this company, they like it, they see the value in it. A lot of it has to do with time because it's hospitality. Saving time is a real big deal, of course, and time is money. Okay, so you, you, you send out, you get it to them, they like it. And now they, and that's what I really want to dig down a little bit here because sure. price is really important here, isn't it? Because Super important. Yeah, because there's, there's a very good chance that you're probably going to replace an existing product. And so how important is that price? Does it have to be the same price? Is that what, is that what you have to hit? And was that, hard to, was that hard for them to do? Yes, so this is where it's really helpful to learn about the industry that you're trying to license in because if you look in the, in the consumer industry for similar products, there's a pretty, probably a pretty hefty margin in the product, but in the hospitality industry, it's really all about volume. And so margins are thin. And, right. and this really came out of a really honest, good conversation with my, you know, with my licensee around what their needs were and, and what would have to happen for this product to be commercially viable. So yes, when you're looking to replace another product that can be manufactured very cost effectively, okay. you have to figure out what is the value that my product is going to add over this existing product and is that and then how does that work so if my product costs more to make and really our value proposition is that it will save you time and money but you're paying more for it on the front end then you're kind of washing out your savings okay. um, so in other industries i think it's a different value proposition right so if you're making a really fun kitchen gadget that kind of makes people laugh and have some joy then maybe your value proposition isn't that it works any better or it creates any efficiency it just brings people joy and so people are potentially willing to pay a premium for that okay. but in the industry i was working in it's really all about being able to manufacture something at a very similar price point to the current product okay now you don't have a manufacturing background do you how did you did they figure that out i mean how did that work and how much time did that take for them to or you to figure that out so definitely I don't have a manufacturing background <laughs> and I would have had no idea how much work this, this would have taken. So certainly something that they took on, which I very much appreciate their area of expertise. Um, the, and, and it took a while. I mean, I think we're coming up at the, I mean, I think the three year mark right now from when they officially first saw the product okay. to you know, working their way through doing some testing and deciding if they wanted the license and then once licensing, working the way through the manufacturing challenges. So it's taken some time and some troubleshooting because really for the product to be viable for them, they had to get the, the rate of manufacture, like the, the number they could make compared to the number they could make of the other one at, at pretty close to a one to one. And so when you make different uh, changes to a product, you know, my product involves some additional um, steps in, okay. in manufacture that the other one didn't. So how do they, how do they get that down to a very close to, a, if not exact to a one to one manufacture rate. And so that took a significant amount of time. I mean, probably a year. Okay. Wow. How yeah. you have to have a lot of patience. A lot of patients, but also understanding that they have a business to run, right? They can't stop all their other work just to like sit here and figure out how to manufacture my product. Okay. They still have customer needs to meet. They still have product to make. So and anytime they're taking their resources away from their current products to work on a new product, that's kind of a loss for them, right? So they still have to meet their manufacturing needs and the needs of their customers while also trying to develop this new product into a commercially viable solution. Um, let's talk a little bit about communication back and forth because three years is a long time. And, <laughs> yes. Yeah, and but usually big ideas take a little bit longer. I know that I've, I've had <laughs> one myself. Um, I'm curious about people always ask, well, how how much should I follow up? And I don't know what they're doing. And uh, are they doing anything? I mean, all this runs through your mind, right? And you want to make sure they're working on your project. So how do you manage that? And, and I know there was a story a little bit about communication. I mean, you have to find the right channel for them to communicate and how often. So how did you handle that? And what did you learn from that? 
Sure. I think communication is very sp specific to individuals. So the individual I work with, um, with this organization travels a lot. And so sometimes like calling and leaving a voicemail, like he may not get that until he gets back to the States or he may not be in a, a position to call me back. Um, also, uh, email is sometimes just when you're traveling and you're working, you know, it just backs up really quickly and it's easy mm -hmm. to overlook. So I, one thing that was really helpful, I think, in in the confidence of working over time was early on in our relationship of working together, we Skyped just like this, face to face. And when you face to face with people, you can connect in a lot more authentic way, I think. Like you can really see um, their their interest and people tend to be more like no one's multitasking, right? We're talking to each other and, okay. and paying attention to each other. So and that was his actually his uh, um, ask was that we chat via Skype, which at first was very intimidating because, you know, like, I don't, I don't know anything about hospitality and here I am, you know, <laughs> face to face with someone on my very first conversation with them. Okay. Um, so part of that was also just being really humble and, and being willing to not let my ego get in the way and say, Hey, I don't actually don't know a lot about this. Can you help me understand more about your industry and your business? And that also helps to build that trust when, when okay. you're willing to ask people to share what they what they know and what they do with you. Okay. Um, and then over time, really our method of communication has changed into kind of a quick text message. You know, okay. how's this going in a quick text back? Like, oh, here's where we're at. And part of that is me just being okay with knowing they're working on the process and not mm -hmm. constantly harassing him with, with questions and, and taking too much out of his time, being respectful of his time, but also mm -hmm. kind of letting him know when I, when I would appreciate an update on where things are at. I really love that you said be respectful of their time because I'm hearing that more and more that a lot of these guys are super busy and you just have to realize they're doing all these things. Like you said, they're running a company, right? So right. <laughs> you have to be respectful. Um, yeah. A couple quick, a couple more questions. Um, sure. People have a lot of fear of, gee, I don't know this company or, or are they going to treat me right? Or are they going to work around me? Did you ever have those fears? I don't think I had those fears based in any reality of my experience with them, but I think they're just natural fears that happen okay. uh, when you, you know, when there's periods of, of not communicating or there's periods of things aren't necessarily going well in trying to move a product forward. Or they're like, Hey, we're basically going to shelve this for a couple months. Cause we're in the, we're kicking off our season and we have other priorities. I think there are times like that where it's very easy to start to, I call it manufacture a story that isn't okay. there, you know, so internally start to feel something that isn't, uh, that isn't a reality. Uh, okay. One thing that, that I found really valuable is very early on in our conversations when I asked, like, can you tell me more about your company and about, about what you guys do? That opens the door for, a per for them to really tell you things that help you understand the priorities and the mm. kind of the values of an organization. Okay. So, for example, um, I expected when I asked that question, I expected it to be like, oh, well, we have distribution here, here and here. And like these are the number of customers we had. But he actually did it. He started from a place of, hey, here's how we worked with inventors in the past. Here's some of the innovations we've put out as an organization. Here's our commitment to cor to, uh, to sustainability and corporate responsibility in how we run our, our factories and our manufacturing. And so it was very clear from the start of our conversation that their values are around people okay. and, and innovation. And that mm -hmm. then gives me confidence working through a relationship too, knowing that, that that's something that's important, at least to that individual in the organization. Wow, that was really amazing. Um, <laughs> that um, I hadn't really thought about it that way, but I think you're right. It, listening to their culture, what's mm -hmm. important to them, kind of gives you maybe a sense of who they are and how they're gonna treat you and how they treat yeah. others. So that's really a great tip. Um, one last question. Okay. Are you excited? I'm so excited. <laughs> and I, you know, the excitement goes in like these little ways, right? Like something really cool happens and, and you're just like, yeah. And then there's the waiting period of the next thing. And anyway, it comes in waves for sure. But, but I think what excites me is that either, however it ends up, it's okay. been this really interesting experience and learning experience and process. And the fact is, I know I can just do it again with another idea and kind of keep moving forward. 
Karen, thank you very much. What um, This is probably one of the best interviews I've had because of your knowledge. And I, I think that probably comes from going through the process, but coaching others. I mean, you really kind of bring, you bring it all together. Um, I think people are going to really love this interview. And I know that your students really loved all the things that you did for them. So thank you very, very much for this interview. Uh, thanks so much, Stephen. That's really kind. I think most of, I mean, honestly, what I've learned has come from working with, with you and with my amazing coach, Terry, and with the InventRight team. Um, and, and certainly, I, I don't know that I would have, I'm certain, actually, that I would not have been able to move forward with this whole process without that support. So I'm just really grateful that, um, that I found you guys somewhere along my path and that you, you helped me along the way. So if I can pass on anything that helps anyone else out, I'm happy to do it. No, well, Karen, thank you very, very much. Oh, 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 o